the home inspector uh, didn't find any major issues uh, except the ones we already knew about. Clear! And he was very, very impressed with geothermal pump as well. It's really a badly crippled uh, system, right. you know, as it's sitting right now. The house was constantly cold, 14, 15, 16 degrees. The problem is whoever touched this house contaminated it to the point, look what I have to do to fix it. We are tired of this winter. We are tired of our problems. You just need the system to work. Isabella and Valdemar wanted to downsize from a townhouse, move into a nice mature neighborhood, and they fell in love with this house. Well maintained, manicured property, great backyard, and as an added bonus, geothermal cooling and heating technology. Now here's the unfortunate part. There was a bidding war, and in that bidding war, they dropped the inspection. They did bring in a home inspector on their own after they bought the house. Did he miss all kinds of things? I'm gonna do a homes inspection. I don't wanna make it right. We were looking for the house in the mature neighborhood uh, with the beautiful uh, trees, big backyard, so we can enjoy ourselves uh, after work and feel like uh, we are living in the park. I have two passions in my life, dogs and bonsais. And this house was perfect. You can play with the dog and the backyard is big enough to have all my bonsais. We like what we saw, especially after uh, seeing other houses in this neighborhood. This house uh, looked very beautiful. We were very happy because it also offered uh, already installed working um, green energy system. We didn't have the home inspection before we bought the house, but we decided to have one after we, we moved in. We were counting on this inspection very much. We were the owner. So he could touch anything, he could uh, move anything, he had all permissions. The home inspector uh, didn't find any, any major issues uh, except the ones we already knew about. Well, hello. Hi. Hello. Can I say this right? Isabella? Uh, nice I'm, to meet you. I'm Mike, nice to meet you, and Valdemar. Nice to meet you. Pleasure to meet you. Come on outside, let's start on the outside. We were very happy, we were happy that uh, not only we uh, saw the, the houses sound and nice looking. Uh, he, he confirmed our um, impression. He said, perfect. Uh, and he was very, very impressed with geothermal pump as well. I've read you've had all kinds of issues mm -hmm. with your HVAC, heating, ventilation, air conditioning. Uh, yes. The pump started uh, breaking circuit breakers, uh, tripping circuit breakers. So we ran downstairs and uh, switched uh, it, it back on. Sometimes by the time you get back down, uh, upstairs, uh, you can hear the click, oh, it stopped again. So welcome to our no, house. thank you. We were desperate. We were trying to do whatever uh, to keep us and the house uh, warm. So you're freezing in the winter and you're hot in the summer. Yes. Despite all the blankets, additional blankets that we bought, uh, we tried what we could, uh, uh, you know, and you're still uh, freezing. I'm going to take a look through everything. I'm going to tell you why, OK? Because I got a bad feeling, but that's just, Whoa. I already looked at the paperwork. We'll take it as it comes. The pump was working less and less. The cold was, uh, house was constantly cold, 14, 15, 16 degrees. And you get the bill. And the first bill, instead of promised by the previous owner $200, uh, you get $850. We have no heat here? No. no. So there is one uh, over there. It's behind the cabinet? Yes. OK, so we, and we have a baseboard. Uh -huh. We have a baseboard. Home inspector afterwards said baseboard heaters are considered supplemental. Okay. I don't like this. You have one of the best heating sources in the world using geothermal technology. Mm -hmm. Do you understand geothermal technology? Yes, yes we do. Using ground temperature, mm -hmm. right? The average temperature of the Earth is around 14 degrees Celsius. We have vertical loops that go into the ground. We're running liquids through those pipes that become that temperature. We bring them into the house, into that geothermal unit. We can now heat and cool the home efficiently. Mm -hmm. Still a nice home, but nice homes can have problems. 
I'm going to grab my tools. I'm going to closely look through your home. I'm going to see what we need to do. Uh, I have a bad feeling we need to replace everything to do with your heating. Because that's just the way that it was run. It's not the way to run this. We were very much concerned about the uh, ducting system going through the attic. But he said, no, it's perfect. It's not a problem. You just give this more insulation. Amazing, eh? They get a home inspector in here to take a look. And what do I see? And here we have some electrical that's been done. And you see the two wires here. We have a very, very loose box here, which I don't like. But what happens when we look here? It's tied into an extension cord. Extension cord comes down to the switch. Totally against code which I did not read in the report. Other things we don't do is take a Romex line like this and just clip it on around, especially inside the garage. The pro about this is it's up high. You can't hit it, and as long as it's at a certain height, it should be a BX or an armored cable, just for safety purposes. I said a lot of the ductwork was run through closets, and you can see clearly. They just box this in. Kind of stupid. The floor's open for me. This is an air return in the closet. Look at the dust build up on the wall here. They've got an air return in the closet. That's moronic. I am getting nice cool air out of here, so this is good. The problem is I don't have enough throughout the house, and as long as I have an air return in the closet, no other air return here, we have pro improper airflow. See all the black? That means at one time, somebody's used these baseboard heaters quite a bit. And what doesn't mix is a very hot source of flammable wood. Whenever you install one of these heat registers, it says right on it that nothing can be above it. It must be installed on the outside of the wall and not a wall built out over top of it. Fire hazard. That's most definitely. I can't believe it hasn't burned the house down. From a nice built house to someone who's come in and done some work. <laughs> Look at this. This is the drip line from the furnace. They've trapped a drain in the vent line, which means you can actually do it. But this is methane gas coming out of here. There's no trapping that air from coming back right on the main sewage line. So just allow all this to bleed back in. Look at this. This really is starting to upset me. That's not right. I had a home inspector go through the house. Did he point this out? No. Mm, let's see what else I find. I don't see a vent. I see mold. <laughs> so no air vent. There's nothing in the wall. I don't know if it's vented through the floor, that it's vented behind the, the trap and not in front of the trap. The home inspector did say something about the mold, but nothing about the venting issues. This is a new system. I want to know if permits were pulled. Very sloppy installation on the ductwork. They've opened up this return, and they got a sharp piece of metal on this pipe. We have copper touching ductwork. Yes, we want a return down here, but we don't want a return like this with all the pipes running through it. Look at this. That is an extension cord that runs over to a switch with no grommet on the box. And that's supposed to use an extension cord, by the way. And where does that run to? Oh, look. Look at how they spliced in. See that splice right there? You have got to be kidding me. <laughs> now I'm not a happy guy at all. And I'm mad at everyone. The inspector might not have known anything about geothermal, but he should have seen these problems. This is not the way to insulate an attic. I'll tell you right now. They've insulated in between the ceiling joists, and then they insulate over top. So want to run one way, want to run the other way, and they'll sandwich it. The problem is, is that all your edging is going to allow bleeding out. So no matter what, the heat loss is going to be large in here. So they're going to lose heat in the winter. The biggest problem I see is they've taken the center of the house, they ran the channel up, or the main trunk line that comes off the HVAC, the geothermal unit. They brought it up into the attic and dispersed their hoses out and dropped it back in the ceiling. So. We're going to have a reverse effect here. In the summer, when you're trying to blow cool air into your attic, it is so hot like it is right now that it's competing with hot air. This is a hot zone. 
In the winter, it's a very cold zone. And the problem with that is it's going to compete with the cold. By the time it actually shuts off, it's not going to be so warm in the house. I want to see Damon. There's no information, there's no documentation whatsoever about this geothermal. Where's the wells? How many wells were dug? Yeah. And you would think if you're going to sell the house and do this, you want a report to go with it. The problem was nobody wanted to come. Nobody wanted to come. Everybody would say, what kind of system you have? Sorry, we are uh, servicing only systems that we know that we installed. I was called in because they have a geothermal heating cooling system. Love it. Yeah. There's no information, there's no documentation whatsoever. I'm bringing in the geothermal guys. Yeah. So what we want to do is find out where the hell they dug the wells. We're yeah. going to have to talk to them first, because okay. I don't want to just dig blindly and, right. and, you know, hey, look, we found worms. Yeah. <laughs> the problems that I have here is that I, I don't want to take this down. I love this. The old the old lath and plaster, it just works really yeah, well. Yeah, because this is a cement finish. This is a real drag to come down. But Gary is going to want to get in here. He talked to me about it a little bit, and he does want to do some runs in here. He wants to eliminate bulkheads on the inside. Well, we're not going to do what they did and run all the flex lines right. through the center of the house, up to the attic, like back octopus. down to the house. Yeah. We're going to have to do it like a standard home, okay. which means I'm going to take down the ceiling. So there are bedrooms, a bathroom, and an office right above us. So the best way to get heat lines into those areas is through the garage ceiling. Geothermal systems, the, the way that you really benchmark the piece of equipment is based on what's going on in the actual loop itself. So what we need to be able to do is actually take a pressure temperature reading right here on the equipment. Yeah. And what you would typically find is a peat spark. And that's a pressure temperature gauge that actually sits on this connection. So it tells us the temperature. Right. So what we can do is we can take a pressure reading on the supply in. We can take a temp pressure reading and temperature reading on the return out. And that will tell us whether this piece of equipment is operating correctly. Now, there's two temperature gauges. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that's what you're talking about, Pete's port, that are just on the other side of that doorway there. What would they be for? Right. So you have a pressure temperature gauge that's mounted. The problem with a mounted gauge is, like anything, it'll actually lose calibration over time. Okay. You want to go in and do testing with equipment that you're familiar with, uh, whether it's digital or not digital, so you can take readings directly at the unit. We don't care what's happening out in the loop field. We care what's happening right here on the piece of equipment. And internally, there's just issues everywhere. Simple little things like... When you look at where the flow center is connected here, you can see we've got solid connections. But yet, when we look at the return one, we've got silliness like we've got this red tubing. Right? This should be a straight connection going out all the way through. And for some reason, they've decided they wanted to put in some red garden hose. So what we'd want to really verify with the equipment is it's actually got a domestic hot water option. Mm -hmm. And what that means, it actually does preheat on the water in the home. We oh, want is to, that right? We want to actually verify, A, is that hooked up? Uh, and the other thing is actually just verify the operation of the equipment. We have no idea if this, I mean, the equipment may run, but that doesn't mean anything. It's like a, an air conditioner. You can have an air conditioner that runs. If it doesn't cool the air, who cares? Right. You know, we really need to get to the bottom of well, it. Well, it sounds like it's working, right? Yeah, you well, you running. can hear it running. Yeah, if the fan's turning, that doesn't mean it's working. OK, <laughs> so you're going to go through this, and then you're going to tell me what you find. And I already know we're taking it out, but I'm really curious to see what they've done wrong. Right. The geothermal guys want some of this ceiling open. We can see that there's an actual vent right here, and there's a vent right behind you. So right where my arm span is, OK, guys? Right from there to there. You're going to pop the rest of all these tiles, these ceiling tiles, in that room, this room. And you're going to come in here, and I want this drywall just on the bottom of this room down, OK? Uh, basically, we're just trying to uh, trace the geothermal lines, see exactly where they go to outside. And then uh, I believe we're going to be doing some digging. OK, we have MJ, Carl, and Rob in the basement exposing some of the ductwork for the geothermal guys. We need to do the same up here in all the closets. So this one in the closet directly above us, all this drywall needs to come down to see what they used here, OK? This is a big job. The old duct used to run up into the closet, used to go all the way up to the second floor, and then distribute out into the attic. Not every floor, not every room had returns. They had one in the closet that was kind of basically your main one for the second floor, and then they had one on the main floor. Not enough return, supply distributed unevenly, a uh, lot of cold spots in the house, a lot of hot spots in the house. 
Distribution, ductwork was terrible here. So for us, it's a lot of work. It's ripping out all the old stuff and completely installing new stuff, new ductwork, new heating runs, new returns in each room. Massive job. Rob, I had the guys open up the ceiling because obviously we want to find where they went outside. Now, it's funny that we see this. I thought right away that we had two lines going out, but I think one of them is an underground uh, sprinkler. Mm -hmm. This would be the geothermal out to the vertical wells, right? Right. Grade is right here. They are right underneath the ground. Right. So that, that's just going to freeze. Uh, you should definitely be below the frost line, yes, which typically that, that would be minimum that we would like to see is three feet. All right. Let's dig a hole. Joel, I can't tell you that we're bored, but we're definitely going to help you, OK? Great. Um, yeah, you got a tarp there. You want us to set up another tarp? What are we trying to do here? We're just trying to follow the line? Yeah, we're just trying to find uh, the entry point, which uh, we suspect is only about a foot to a foot and a half down. Yep. Uh, just trying to find where it goes in, see what's happening. OK, around. well, let's get these guys involved, too. Let's get them all digging here. Sure. That's it right there, isn't it? Yeah, that's it. And it's insulated? It's insulated, at least, which is a positive, but you just got to see where it goes now. We have to keep digging in order to find that loop field, because if it's in good shape, we might be able to reuse it. Everything we've seen so far is a little messed up, isn't it? One thing that was, I think, of real concern is the fact that the lines were buried so shallow. What are we at, about a foot, foot and a half here? Yeah, generally, we we looked at the whole site, and that's about what everything was, was buried at. It's just about one foot below ground level, which um, kind of sends up some red flags. The other thing that's a real concern is that all of this is right in the tree roots. Anytime anyone ever does anything on the, this property, if they go to dig in another tree or shrub or uh, if there's any utilities, right. point. they'll be right into these lines. I mean, isn't this sending up enough red flags that we we stop here at this point? I, I, I think so. I think we wanted to make sure that either we were 100% uh, good with, with reusing it or if it made a case for replacement. Which what you're saying is I don't think you want to attach to this. No, I think we've seen enough to know that we're probably uncomfortable with doing that. I think that's the best call. So now that we've decided that the loop field is not reusable, the geothermal guys can fuse the old lines together to make sure nothing leaches back into the ground. And while they finish up, our guys can gut the entire basement. I mean, there was electrical issues, off-gassing issues, there was no plumbing vents in the bathroom. I mean, a lot of problems. And at this point, it's just faster and cheaper to start from scratch. How's that frame for you guys? Not as strong as it should be, eh? So what do you see wrong with the unit? You know, a couple of the complaints that the owners had were in regards to the noise, for one thing, and uh, also the high utility bills that they were experiencing. And uh, one thing that we're seeing here is, uh, as far as noise go, it is quite noisy when the unit is running. Why but, is that? Is that? Well, the, the piping has been run directly from the machine, which there is a certain level of vibration that is created by the compressor in okay. this. And they were attached like right up to the floor joists of the, the house right oh, above okay. this. Oh, okay. So as soon as it's vibrating, it's vibrating the house. Right. So the harmonics would go right I up through the, through the floor of this area that's, uh, that's right above us here. Um, another thing that we did find, though, when we ran the thing through the performance check was that it had a bit of a problem. Probably a mechanic that was working on this previously overcharge the, the system with refrigerant. So okay. that, that may, in fact, have damaged the compressor. So the output is not where it should be. Another thing, too, is maybe just grab onto that, that line right there, Damon. Oh, is that ever hot? Right. And, and that um, this machine hasn't run for several days. Good and yet, point. And yet you can feel how hot those lines are. 
So this heat is actually convecting from the electric water heater that this is attached uh -huh. to. So that could explain some of the high utility bills that they have because right. actually it's taking heat from the hot water heater and running it the opposite way. Instead of using the geothermal, it's actually running off that. Right, yeah. It, it, this is contributing oh, okay. to the heat output of the, of the machine. Again, because primarily of the damaged compressor that it has in it right now. So how are we going to get this unit out or how are you going to get the unit out? <laughs> Well, we'll just disconnect all the lines, and I think we can slide it over there to the uh, to the opening, and then we have a cart that we can load that onto and uh, and get it up the stairs. One, two, three. Two, three. Unfortunately, we're having some drilling done today for the geothermal lines, and they're going to do smack dab in the middle of this driveway. Do I want to take this up? Not at all, but we have to. They're going to have to dig here today, so I'm going to just cut a 10-foot swath right through here. Give them a nice digging area. You're already going to do new east drops and downspouts, I can tell right there. Probably wouldn't hurt to put some smart screen on this side of the house, maybe the back side as well due to the trees. New soft vents, probably remove the old louvers, they're probably packed with, you know, insulation, dirt and yeah, yeah, and such. Yeah. So remove the existing ones, replace them with new and then add uh, additional soft vents. So really busy day today. We have the new geothermal unit here, which means we can put the house back together, get the homeowners back home. Okay, guys, if you actually want to spin in here, this is the home of the new furnace room right in here. Now, we're going to install the unit in a new utility room that we built instead of the crawl space where the old one was. And this will make it easier to install and a lot more accessible. My guys are actually framing like crazy. We're just trying to keep ahead of all the HVAC installation that's happening today. Now, Gary's pre-made most of the ductwork, so he and Rob have to position the unit perfectly. Can you slide that over? It looks perfect. Sure. Martin is here to reroute existing plumbing and run any new lines that are needed for the geothermal unit. And last but not least, we have Frank here today. He's going to start rewiring the entire basement and make sure any changes we need for the new HVAC system are in place. Two lights. I'm thinking one about here. Yeah. Because there's going to be equipped in here. Yeah. And a second light around here somewhere. Okay, but you're going to have ductwork coming right through here, right? So well, I'll talk to Gary, double check where that's going to all end up, okay. and then I'll, I'll center off another light. Day today we got to finish off getting the rest of the supply in, get the return in. We got the electrician here, plumber here, so we're all trying to work together to get our jobs done. So today's a big day. Got to get a lot of duck up, get a lot of the rough ends in. Um, that way everybody else can keep going. Actually, you're two, almost two and a half there. You know what I'm saying, you want to lift it up for? Him? Yes. Well, the piping that we're putting in now, we're just making sure that the pressure drop is minimal, uh, trying to keep as few 90-degree uh, elbows as possible between here and outside. And, uh, yeah, making sure, too, that it's, it's properly insulated and that all the uh, tail ends of the insulation are, are properly sealed so there's no chance of any condensation happening and uh, coming down through the, uh, the finished ceiling when that's all said and done. Okay, he's doing return, return. Where, where does he want his supplies? Well, he's got six lines coming through, including the return air lines, and we're, he wants four. to come through the wall here. To return four feeds. Okay. We don't want to come under floor joists at all. I don't want to restructure this. I prefer we go through the floor joists. Let's go inside. That's why I was calling you in. I didn't want to do that until I talked to you. Cut open the ceiling across here, and don't be afraid to take the floor. So come in, I will build the wall out. Come up through the floor, have them use the void in between. So we don't have to go through the brick. As much as you can go okay. through the floor, Joyce, I prefer. And you but know this is gonna be two by six wall here. I'm fine with that. Because they're gonna lose a bit of space. I'm fine with me. that, the living room's big enough. It's huge, yeah. uh, You're gonna have bulkheads one way or the other, so it's right. better just to put up a new wall and then spray this wall. Yep. Right, spray On it right into the outside. Gotcha. Good? Absolutely. Love it. We're 
drilling geothermal heating. We've got six holes to do at 135 feet. We're expecting mostly sand and clay here, so it should be pretty easy drilling. We stick 10 feet apart always per hole just to get the heat out of the ground properly. Uh, if they're too close together, the system's not going to work properly. Now, a rotary drill is used to bore into the ground 10 feet at a time. Water is then fed down the center of the pipe, and this forces the earth from the hole up to the surface. And then that basically sits in our pan here. We dig it out with a shovel and then put it on the ground, make a big mess. And then at the end? And then at the end, we get it all vacuum trucked up. You'll never know where you're here. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we've got a 10-foot length of drill rod on there. The bit's attached to the end of it. We're ready to go, pretty much. Just going to mix up some mud and let it fly. That's the quick jaw. Basically, it, uh, with the right amount of quick jaw, you can build the walls of your hole with it. we got to keep our hole open, put the pipe down. It's, uh, it's our objective there. Okay, so we're gonna pull a brand new feed into this box here, directly from the panel. So the original feed was uh, this wire here, then they ended up using this wire, which is called a 14-3, which brings a current and a switch line over into this beautiful contraption. So we're gonna lose all this and just bring in a brand new line right from the panel. It was mostly smooth. We hit a boulder on one hole slowed us down a little bit, but uh, it's better than most jobs, that's for sure. Just rolled out 135 feet. So we're just gonna get it ready, and tape it to our stinger rod, and get it ready to sink in the ground. Our loop, a three-quarter inch loop, and this is the end. We'll tape it to a stinger rod here, and then when we put it in the ground, the stinger rod is just going to help us push it in the ground. Yeah, the electrical tape will hold it together. That's the trick for us. So as soon as we complete drilling each hole, we have to pull all our rods out one at a time, and then we go ahead and we put our loop down the hole. It's lowered down with a winch cable drops the loop to the bottom of the hole, and then we basically just pull that back out with the winch, leave the loop in the ground, and then uh, onto the grouting. So although this house has a multitude of problems, we're here to solve a couple on the exterior. We've got some uh, soffit louvers that are uh, quite jammed up with dirt and debris. Uh, so we're going to be installing some new uh, vents themselves, upgrading the eaves troughs. They're um, older four-inch troughs that have sagged and, and lost their flow. So we'll be removing those and installing a five-inch seamless eaves trough and installing smart screen to keep all the leaves and debris out of them. The other issue we talked about with Mike uh, on the soffits here, you'll see a lot of this um, mold or mildew kind of uh, uh, starting to appear on the soffits themselves. Uh, again, due probably just to uh, venting, uh, poor lack of venting in the soffit, um, potentially ice dams and such, uh, because the air wasn't being able to circulate up through the soffit into the attic and then carried out by the roof fence. Well, we're gonna vent the soffit properly so that it actually gets some airflow in there so that it doesn't uh, reoccur. So Jeff, what's the process? You have a grout truck coming and a vacuum truck? Once we finish our holes, we move our truck out of here. Uh, he'll start pumping grout down the hole, and at the same time, the vacuum will sit over top of the hole, and it'll basically just suck away any slop that comes out. And what's the grout doing? The grout has a number of purposes, actually. It provides a good thermal conductivity for the hole, which means that uh, 
the heat transfers better through grout than it does through the water that would be down there. Right, so it'll lose heat if you don't encase it. Exactly, right. exactly. Uh, it's also to prevent what we call hole sink. And hole sink's just a dip that you might see later on down the road from the hole caving in on itself. Right. Another purpose would be so that the surface water doesn't contaminate any ground drinking water or something like that down there. Okay, after all this, you're gonna spray foam drywall? Mm-hmm. We're almost there. End of the week, we're spray foaming drywalling early next week. And all mold-free drywall, yes? Absolutely. That's what we love. It's very shocking. I never expected so much work has to be done here. We knew about the heating system. We knew we had problems, but we never expected that there is so many other things. Oh, this looks fantastic. Okay, we're finally ready. My geothermal, my electrical and plumbing is all done within my walls now. I'm ready for spray foam. Now we have three locations to spray foam. We're gonna hit the garage ceiling and we're gonna hit the living room back wall. Instead of spraying in the garage, we're gonna spray on the interior instead. And of course the basement, we're gonna hit all perimeter walls. Get ready for drywall. So what are we looking at in terms of days here? It's a day job, pretty much. I bought four guys in yeah. to make sure I got it done uh, quick so the tapers can get started. I'd say and you guys flew anyone. on this, buddy. Like, there's a lot done, so this is great. I can call my mutters in almost immediately. Like, we had spray foam yesterday. You guys are already drywalled 90% of the, the basement here. Yeah, it uh, moves fast when you got good guys. Absolutely. Come on up, start cutting everything. That way, I'll start cutting everything this way. Bring it towards here, and we'll shove it down, okay? Okay. All the original heat ducts in the attic are connected to ceiling vents throughout the house. Now, we have to remove the ducts and plug all the holes, because we do not want cold air or hot air, depending on the season, coming back in. Today we're going to uh, dig up all of the vertical bores and then we're going to uh, bring them back uh, and manifold them all together which will distribute the water solution uh, throughout all of the pipes uh, equally. So I saw you making, I'll call it the flute. Just tell me what you're making here. It looks like a manifold to me but... Yeah. Basically uh, our inch and a quarter header lines yep. that we uh, brought to here right. uh, will connect into the end of this manifold here. The loop solution will go in, it's an inch and a quarter, and then it manifolds off into uh, three quarter lines. There's uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six, which represents the different supplies to each bore. We will need to uh, fuse all of these into this manifold here. Right. And then uh, from there, we'll uh, put some pressure on it, make sure it's good. We'll hook a, a compressor up at the machine right. and pressure it all up, and then we'll backfill once we've tested it. Big day today. The geothermal is actually done in the yard. We have Rob from Buchanan and Hall today actually coming to turn it on. We have drywalling happening, we have mudding happening, doors are going in today. All the last little finishing touches, plus turning the furnace on. The end goal today would be to get the unit on. We're gonna do our final tests to make sure that we have proper numbers going through the machine. And basically, um, we wanna make sure that the machine's taking enough heat out of the water to make sure it's, it's operating the way it should. We can also adjust fan speeds to um, to satisfy the customer's, uh, you know, comfort level. I'm just caulking around all our baseboard and trim so we can finish up so the painters can do everything and we'll have a nice finish. Uh, 
I just want to know a couple of the differences between what was here, what was stuffed under that crawl space, and what the new unit's doing for us. One of the major complaints was in regards to the noise. And when we did run that unit, there was um, a lot of noise and vibration that came from that, and that resonated right up through the floor and into their living room. Right. As you can hear, this one is running it's right, quiet. right now. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's running full out, and we're able to have a, a conversation, and it's, you know, it's almost right. about as quiet as a, as a good quality refrigerator, really. Right. That's about all the noise that it would make. One of the other complaints they had was that they didn't know who to contact about any of this. So when they needed to fix it, there's nothing here. The paperwork's been lost over the years. They had nothing. And what you're telling me is that this system will actually tell them what is wrong. Your number's on the inside of the thermostat upstairs and it'll actually read it out to them and they can actually go over the phone and tell them exactly what is wrong with this unit. Right, there's diagnostic lights that are right on the front of the machine down here and uh, those lights read, again, if there is a fault, it will read here, but it will also read what that fault is up on the thermostat right. and it'll store that there. It even displays the, uh, the type of machine, the model that it is, the serial number, right. all of that information is right there handy for them. If it's done properly, I mean, it's, they're a great system. I don't know where you've been staying, but I hope you've been comfortable. Very Where did you stay? Yes. Uh, with my daughter. With your In, daughter? Yes. Okay, yes. so that's not so she bad. Was, no, no. This whole driveway pretty well was all pulled up. Relayed everything here, cleaned up the bush line. Even I thought it was impressive. You know, as we walk over and take a look, new east drops, new downspouts, which really has cleaned up the whole front. Yeah. Whoa. That's that way all the way around the house, including on the back of the house, put in some smart screen to stop the leaves from getting in your east drop and blocking the system. We got to talk a little bit about what we found. You already knew the last time I brought you here that uh, the geothermal was just below grade. So we went six holes, 135 feet deep. We did a whole new vertical loop system in your front yard, fixed it all up, and you can't even tell we were here. So uh, a lot of work was done inside your garage. Uh, we had to pull down the whole ceiling, right? Because what we had to do was refeed your whole house with new heating. So all new dock lines, everything had to be redone. With the insulation, we make sure we spray foam on this, right? So we get all our duct work in. We want to we want to keep it on the warm side. So you brought the ceiling down, is that right? Absolutely. We dropped the ceiling by, I'd say, maybe a foot and a half. So you're going to see a lower ceiling here, but there is a hell of a lot of spray foam up above it. And it's clean. Like, we had to come through the wall it's with how many to... runs? Six runs. Six runs altogether came through that wall. Whoa. So just above this, this is where we had to feed. There's a room above. So we have to get your basic heat runs to the front of the windows. It took a lot of work. It's beautiful, it's just... Already? <laughs> yes, yes, I'm, I'm so happy already. <laughs> and you now have a door closer, so you gotta make sure that door doesn't close on you. So okay. now we gotta hold it. Awesome. Okay, let's start in the hallway here. Uh, you remember when uh, the first time I opened this closet, mm. it wasn't a closet, right? No. no. Because they damaged the floor, we fixed yes. the floor yeah. and yes. put in a tile floor. So remember. it's now a closet. Very needed closet. <laughs> Very needed. Yeah, well, yes. you didn't have any, right? You didn't oh, have yes. one upstairs. I didn't have any, so yeah, thank you so much. It's just a basement. Go it's ahead. Go ahead. It's just a carpet on the stairs. Oh, oh my God. Now, this is honestly Damon's fault. <laughs> wow. Because I said to Damon, don't finish the basement. Don't finish the basement. We got a lot of work to do. Oh. And uh, we did all the work, and he finished the basement. No worries. I'm going to have to actually give all the credit to my guys. I mean, I did cheat a little bit and pushed him a little too far. And he said, do what you want. So this was completely gutted, completely. There was nothing left in here. We took everything out and redid it all. We studded the walls, ran the electrical, spray foam on all your walls. You're not going to believe how warm this room is going to be in the winter. You will not believe it. You remember when I first brought you in, the geothermal went out the wall right here. It was six inches beneath the, the earth, right? Yeah. It now goes out the wall down here. So it's, it's the way it's supposed to be because we brought in all the right people. 
With the design, we make sure we do proper bulkheads, nice and high, covering everything in just perfectly. Works out nice, you know, lights throughout, they're all match, everything's nice and neat, and everything about this is the right way. Every single product is mold resistant that we use, the drywall, the carpet, everything we use. I'm happy. So are we, come on. <laughs> I told you we were gonna lose your bathroom and you're gonna lose your kitchen. <laughs> Right? So have you lost your kitchen? That's the most beautiful part of my house. Oh, now. This is? Yes, so you yes. Go downstairs and rent out upstairs. So you have some work to do, my friend. <laughs> I'm kidding. We took out your kitchen, but we did give you a bathroom. So let's look at the bathroom. Wow. You go ahead. You just walk around. Is there a bathroom We'll follow here? now. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. Beautiful glass shower stall. Uh -huh. New toilet, new everything. Oh. Nicer bathroom all around. No, happy? but oh, happy. more than happy. happy. Come on, it's like it's an enormous job, and we never expected such a beautiful things. This is enormous. We were hoping seriously that perhaps we will get a little bit of patch in here and there, perhaps a little bit of shine to it, but we never ever expected that we will get a diamond. Nobody yeah. can do this, but you people. Come on in to see your new utility room. So go ahead. Whoa. Oh. Whoa. We want to make the utility room exactly what that means. That's going to be our laundry room. That's going to be our furnace. Our electrical panel in the corner, which was completely redone. I love Frank and his boys to all the work they've done. We took out of the crawl space that unit that was there. We put in state of the art. This is a beautiful system. And you can see how professionally it's installed. Oh, yeah. I think yeah, it's a great idea on. that everything was moved from the uh, crawl space and put here. I think it's, uh, yeah. it's a much easier access and, uh, yeah. and very and, easy to use yes. as well. Yes. By the way. Mm -hmm. What I love about this system is that we are taking Earth's natural temperature and we're raising it by a couple of degrees, putting it throughout your house so it doesn't cost a lot to do it. At the same time, as we're heating to 140, we'll put it into a holding tank. Now, this holding tank, instead of wasting it, because we are cycling, think about how that water goes, this now assists your hot water tank. This is one enormous team. Those people will never fail in any corner. <laughs> it's no matter what they promise to do, uh, they will always deliver. And that's what they say, you are the most lucky people because that's my home with his team fixing the house. And this is things that no money can buy. Are you happy? Yes, yes, yes happy. I'm more than happy, come on. It's then I'm like, happy, yes. then I think we did yes. our job right. Thank you very much, my yeah. friend. Thank you. How a person can say thank you yeah, for this job that you did and the, the most beautiful present we ever got. It's thank you, it's not enough, but <laughs> oh, you don't have to hug me. You can hear, you can hug me. <laughs> they left here the, some parts of their lives. They worked very hard, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, I think it's important. It's quite possible that all of us will stay in the basement now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh boy. I think I'm gonna like this. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, once again. You are so welcome. Did you make this by chance? Oh, yeah, you bet. <laughs> I think it's also my, my, my son is speechless completely. <laughs> I guess this would be a good time to tell my parents that I'm moving out of the top floor. <laughs>